Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog for Monday, September 19th, 2016. Here's a look at the tropics for this afternoon. We have Tropical Storm Carl still struggling out here just south of 20 degrees north latitude. Another depression, 90% chance of developing. This will probably be our next depression by earlier, early this evening, later this afternoon, whichever way you want to look at it. This is the leftovers of Julia off the coast of North Carolina with this front coming through may squeeze out some additional heavy rains in that area so be on the watch out for that but really Julia is all done I don't see any chance that this will really develop any more than it did earlier you remember it came all the way across as a tropical wave kind of meandered here developed some danced around off the coast and now it's sitting up here and we can finally be ready to get rid of this once and for all uh, here's Carl, and you can even see here on this satellite view, upper level winds streaming across the system, blowing the clouds away instead of out in a clockwise fashion. Anticyclonic flow aloft is absent from this system instead. The pattern of these winds just blowing across the system, not very helpful, but that should change. It doesn't have to, but it should, according to the computer models anyway, and this could intensify on its way west. This is Bermuda here. It looks like Carl is going to come up and then turn somewhere in the vicinity of Bermuda. There's still a chance if it stays weak enough it could come farther to the west, but I think the trough that's going to be dipping down will be enough to yank this out to sea, and that'll be that. And then out here, uh, near the Cape Verde Islands, or the Cabo Verde Islands as they're referred to now, another depression trying to form. This will probably go on to become Tropical Storm Lisa. And these two together, if Carl becomes a hurricane, they'll start to make the ace points for the season add up. And why is that important? While well, most people focus on the impacts, and that's understandable, will the hurricanes hit land or not? And if they don't, who cares? From a scientific perspective, the accumulated cyclone energy kind of gives you an idea of the quality of the season. Do you have lots of short-lived weak storms like Julia? that add only a couple of these accumulated cyclone energy points, or what we call ACE points? Or do you have pretty robust hurricanes that add 10, 20, 30 ACE points apiece? And uh, as an example, Gaston had somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or 26 ACE points. And that's pretty respectable. And uh, we're sitting at around uh, close to 50 or so right now. And a normal season is around 100 or so, anywhere from 95 to 105 is your average seasonal score. And it's possible that Carl and then eventually Lisa will add pretty significantly to that score for what it's worth. We'll keep track of that. Uh, different perspective satellite animation here. You can see the leftovers again of Julia here, this front coming through. Maybe we'll squeeze out that additional heavy rain and some gusty winds, but that's really it. No more from Julia, thank goodness. In the Eastern Pacific, Payne, P-A-I-N-E, became a hurricane overnight and it'll move up towards the Baja with minimal impact overall at least from the wind and surge perspective heavy rain will spread across this region and into the desert southwest maybe even LA San Diego and maybe Las Vegas can get in on some uh, much needed moisture and uh, this time of year when that can come in and it's not too much at one time that's a very beneficial thing Looking at the 850 millibar vorticity signature, this is my way, uh, at least, of looking at the health of these systems. If they're round, like we see with Hurricane Payne, nice rhyme there, isn't it, uh, in the Pacific, well then, you know, this round uh, shape sh you know, says, look, this is a very healthy system. The vorticity is bundled, and when you see a round look to it, that's a very positive sign for development of a tropical cyclone. But then look in the Atlantic. You, know, you got these sort of weird shaped systems, elliptical here. I don't even know what you call this. It's just bizarre. And then, you know, the slowly dwindling away shape of the low pressure area associated with uh, Julia over there. So this kind of really shows you a, a great example. Uh, this is what they should look like. This is just weird and a sign that the Atlantic Basin has had some issues this year. And you can even see on the upper level wind chart uh, there's Carl, there's an upper level low here, and those winds are coming across from that, shearing the system a little bit, another upper level low up here, upper level low down here in the Caribbean, 
Winds are coming out of the southwest pretty strong over the top of Ex Julia. So no, things are not very conducive. But they could change and allow Carl, as it moves off to the west here and west-northwest, eventually turning maybe towards Bermuda there. This region in here, things could get more favorable. And the ocean heat content being one of those favorable areas. There's Bermuda and there's the warm ocean, upper ocean heat content that this will be moving into and the track forecast. Generally, most of the models in agreement on that turn curving away from the United States. There's still an outside chance that this comes in farther to the west, especially if it stays weak. We'll watch for that, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen as of now. What's interesting, though, check this out. Most of the computer models here indicating a fairly robust strengthening trend, especially at days four and five here, getting into you know, almost category four hurricane intensity from some of these. On the other hand, the global model, the GFS, nothing, just flat. Actually, you know, if you look at it, it, it weakens it a little bit. That's really, really weird. Not sure if the GFS is picking up on this or if it's going to be right or what. But we'll have to keep an eye on this, especially in Bermuda, because this is the time period that it would be approaching Bermuda. And you see that all these models have it strengthening. So if it passes close enough to Bermuda to bring whatever core there would be, then a strengthening hurricane could be a problem. So we'll be watching that very closely. Water temperature anomalies. I wanted to show you this for this date. Very warm still in the main development region, Western Atlantic, Caribbean and Gulf. Uh, tropical, the subtropical Atlantic, excuse me, is cooling a little bit. So maybe this area starts to focus its energy more as this cools off. And then, of course, the large area of cold anomalies here in the Pacific. Not quite La Nina, but that's getting close to it there. Fairly cold. The eastern Pacific has stayed about normal. A few speckles of below normal in here, but this really cooled off this year, and we'll have to see if that persists. It should. Most indications are that that pattern will persist. Uh, but the Atlantic's still very warm, and we still have about six weeks of the heart of the season to get through. And with all that warm water out there, hey, it's not over till it's over. Put it that way. We've had pretty good luck so far. Earl came into Belize with minimal impact overall, and you know, considering what it could be, and then certainly Hermine. Uh, you know, impactful down here in Florida, but you know, it always could be worse. And so far, we've dodged pretty, you know, pretty good round of bullets this year with all these systems coming our way in the western part of the basin without any of them reaching their maximum potential. Will that hold? We'll have to wait and see. There's certainly plenty of energy available, and as the seasons change and the patterns change, you just never know. So, do stay vigilant and aware of what's happening. And I remind you, you've got some great tools to do it with here with Hurricane Pro and HD. All right? Well, that's it for me for today. Again, I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com and, of course, for Hurricane Pro and HD. I'll be back with you again on Wednesday for another look at things then.